Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, <clears throat> welcome to another uh, live stream uh, from uh, No Tanks HQ. Um, <clears throat> just um, uh, some uh, some housekeeping. Last week I was talking about uh, the trips that we've got planned. Um, I put a, put a list up on Facebook. We're now taking deposits for um, a couple of them. Um, if there may be, we may be extending the cave um, trip in April um, to extend it to accommodate a couple more people uh, or three more people. Um, if we or if we set up another group with another instructor, we can have three or another six, so another two groups, three per each. Um, if you're interested in that cave uh, exploration trip in April let us know and um yeah just message us and we'll see uh, see where we can we can step it up for another another group of people um <clears throat> it's already sold out the first four groups that we've taken in so it's, it's quite impressive uh may looks like uh, we're going to iceland and uh, we're now taking uh deposits for Marsa in june so that's that's uh, a little bit of a uh, bit of housekeeping um I was uh, I mentioned last week that I'll talk about um, fitness uh, and exercises for fitness. So we're going to talk. I'm going to talk as a general thing tonight about uh, fitness. Um, just hang on one second. Oh, yeah. So I'm going to talk about general fitness um, and some principles behind what you should be doing in uh, in winter no, this is this is my normal speech for winter but we're going to use it for lockdown stroke winter um, because we're in the UK so it sounds like uh, it seems like um, our lockdown's going to finish for a little while and then come on again maybe after Christmas but this doesn't doesn't really affect us this is a standard winter training uh, philosophy that uh, I'm talking about tonight. So a really standard system that we use every year. Um, so you're not missing out from if you've just started uh, stepping up your freedive training. You've you know you just uh, in the brief brief period you had between lockdowns, you did some diving. And went, wow, this is what I want to do. Uh, then uh, you, you're actually on track to be doing what we would normally be doing this time of year. So a couple of people have asked uh, uh, what cardio work they should they be doing. And this is why I'm talking about it. Um, I um, hopefully on Friday I'm going to put up. Um, it won't be a live stream, but it'll be it'll be filmed in a very same similar way. Maybe it'll be a live stream. Maybe I'll just do it live. I don't know. On Friday, and I'm going to uh, actually show some specific exercises that you can be doing um, uh, dry. Okay, so on Friday I'll actually be specific fitness. Uh, exercises that you could be be doing. Whereas tonight I'm going to be talking about the you know the kind of the principles behind it. So um, if you've got questions, uh, the the um, uh, comments are up. So if you've got any questions as I go through, just ask them in the comments, and, and we'll we'll maybe ask uh, answer a couple of questions as well uh, throughout the session. So let's start. Um, and I mentioned this last week, and I'll say, I'll say it again, I say it again and again. Uh, so I mentioned this last week that um, cardio doesn't really carry over between sports very well. So you can be super, super uh, good at running long distances, and then you go and do free diving, and you'll be knackered. You can be uh, cycle for days and really feel like uh, a traditional idea of cardio fitness um and then you do judo and and and, and it, it it knocks it out of you now part of this is um well no basically cardio doesn't transfer very well between um exercises because they're usually so specific so for instance cycling is very um controlled there's mechanically uh, a very stable movement all right. which which means uh, the body can work in a very it knows exactly how it's going to work so got to be careful um, when when trying to plan your your fitness regime that it actually 
is going to be useful for the sport you're going to be doing. Now, in this case, this podcast is about freediving, but you know it may well be uh, jiu-jitsu or, or horse riding or whatever it is. But think about what kind of uh, cardio you, you want to get and try and get your dry training as close to what you uh, want it for. Okay, so for me, I've always said, and I'll, I'll kind of say it, you know, I'll say it again, uh, that um, single-sided sports I find really detrimental to um, non-single-sided sports. For instance, tennis. It's uh, it's it's not single-sided, obviously single-sided, it, but the two sides of the body do some very very specific, very very different movements. Um, same with golf. Uh, you, 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 you are doing one movement in one direction. So this is what I call a single-sided uh, uh, sport. Because um, you only play it from one side. So um, be very careful about entering into them, especially when talking about freediving, because freediving is an all-body activity. Okay, so... Uh, there's some warnings to kind of avoid. Uh, and the third uh, warning is, um, not warning, no, not war- warning is the wrong word. Uh, the third thing to consideration, third consideration is um, uh, time. <laughs> so um, you can get on your bike and you can cycle for an hour. Boom. Okay, you can cycle for two hours. You know, it, it's, 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 that's, you know, quite, uh, quite a normal cycle ride. It was an hour, two hours long. If you're using this as uh, fitness for free diving, instantly you've got this issue that yes, you're going to get in the water for a free diving session and be in the water for an hour, two hours. Um, but what you're training for is two minutes. Okay, always up it. Okay, because you'll think about fitness. So if you're diving for you know average of two minutes, then think four minutes. Okay, if you're diving an average of four minutes, then you know uh, train for six minutes. Or when I say train for six minutes, focus on six minutes of training. So cycling. Uh, I said this. I said this. Uh, uh, you know, to, to lots of people. If you're not doing anything then cycling is fantastic. If you're cycling and you want to step it up, it's rubbish. Okay, So think of your levels. If you've got a bike and you've got a park next to you and you're not doing anything, then go cycling because you're going to be fitter. But if you're already doing some sort of exercise and you say, I want to kind of get a little bit more focused on my freedive fitness, then cycling is not very good because you cycle for two hours, whereas you need high impact, um, not high impact, there's a word escapes me uh short short sharp four minutes okay so you can you can build this in so if you are cycling if if, you have to cycle um for an hour to go to work for sake of argument you can do interval training with that you can cycle nice and gentle for five minutes and then hard for five minutes gentle for five minutes and then hard for five minutes but realistically you're just compromising with that setup. Much better is uh, would if you've got the opportunity is to do something that takes you know five or six minutes to do. So proper interval training in the park. You go for a run. It doesn't have to be in the park, but <laughs> I've got a park in my head. You go for a run. You run hard for five minutes. Stop. Walk. Keep the body warm so you don't seize up. Let the heart rate go down, let the everything drop, and then bang, another five minutes. Five minutes on, five minutes off, five minutes on, five minutes off. Teaching your body that you want it to work hard for five minutes. You don't want to work hard for an hour, you want it to work really hard for five minutes. Okay. This is gonna help you with uh, you know your your free diving. Now, this isn't a new concept. Uh, if you go to any boxing gym in the world. Uh, they'll, the, the, the bell will be on a cycle uh, and you, people will be skipping for uh, you know, however long, depends what level boxing you're, you're at, which however long the, the rounds are, so 
let's say three minutes. So it it'll be three minutes, and the bell will go, and you'll rest. And then three minutes, and the bell will go, and you'll rest. Just, so you're skipping three minutes, and then you rest. Uh, you're, you're shadow boxing three minutes, and then rest. Because you're teaching your body that that's what you want it to do. You want it to work hard for the length of a round, then it gets a short rest. Just like the, the, the end result, the sport you're going to do. Okay? So, there's the three things I want you to consider uh, when moving into this realm of uh, dry fitness um, for for lockdown and winter. Think about um, what that, that it's not going to be perfect. So try and kind of uh, think about it and bring bear that in mind. Don't do single sided. Uh, you know, do something that correlates and uh, thinking about the timing of it. Now, for me, uh, sports like uh, and and this is one of the reasons why we integrate at No Tanks. We integrate uh, caving. Uh, into our winter training schedule is because it's an all over body activity which I um, mean if you've ever done caving you'll know this if you haven't I'm, I'm going to explain it to you uh, you do it for four hours or two hours or six hours whatever but it's intense so you have to climb up something work real hard and then you just walk in and then you have to do it intense and then you and then you just you, you walk in a bit you kind of squeeze in. It's all over body, upper body strength, uh, your know, legs working. Uh, you're really maneuvering, so you're using all your flexibility without thinking about it. So, in a, in, I mean, if I gave you a four-hour uh, kind of you know training program, you wouldn't do four hours, and and you know kind of work your arms for three minutes, and then work your legs for three minutes, and then rest, and then stretch, and then you wouldn't do it. But when you go caving, you have to. Okay, so there's this level of commitment that kind of forces you into to doing it. An all-over body exercise, which can be tailored. Um, so if you want to go slower, you can slow it down. If you want to go faster, you can go So this is my personal choice of one of the best exercises uh, for freediving. Um, it also ties in really well with jiu-jitsu, uh, again, because you want to roll uh, you know, kind of in certain uh, kind of circumstances, uh, certain times, and then relax and roll, relax. Um, and uh, and this is also why I suggest uh, jiu-jitsu, because it's all over body exercise again. But really, caving is the one I really, I really, really, really like it. So that's a general fitness exercise that you can be doing for free diving. Bam, straight in there. Of course, of course you should be holding your breath. Not when you're caving, but in general. So you, there's no reason why you don't hold your breath every day. Every day there should be a, a, a period where you're doing breath hold activities. Okay? Now you can make these up. Hold your breath from one lamppost to the next lamppost. Hold your breath uh, while you watch a, 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 the intro to EastEnders. I, it doesn't matter. Just get yourself used to holding your breath on 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 the fly. Like ah, quick, hold your breath now. Do it now. So uh, breathing out, lower your shoulders, relax, and three, two, Fred, blow the candles, and then hold your breath. Okay, keep holding, keep holding. I'll talk you through it. You weren't expecting to do this as a breath hold. Bam, it's put you in a really odd place. You were sitting there, I don't know what you were doing. You were you know, eating your dinner or, or doing something else. Ah, I'm holding my breath. Puts you in a real stressed place. You can work through it. Okay, I don't need to you know, do whatever for the next couple of minutes. I can relax. Half close your eyes. You don't need to see me. I'm sitting in a room. You don't need to see this. And just see how long this breath hold lasts. If you need to breathe, breathe. It doesn't matter doesn't matter but it's just like that and, and you can carry on holding your breath or you can start breathing it's up to you I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna be timing you uh, hey don't you don't don't yeah you can you can carry on I can't see you I don't know why I said that of course I can't see you uh, anyway so you can carry on holding you don't have to so the point is that I'm just put putting you on the spot really quite a stressful situation oh what well, i'm gonna hold my breath you can do that to yourself every day all right so 
Mix it up. Do it when you're walking. Do it when you're sitting on the sofa watching telly. You should be holding your breath every day in different situations. If you can, do at least three breath holds, maybe four breath holds, okay? Because that um, we've covered before, third breath holds always the best. It, that's when your body goes, ah, right, I know what you're doing now. The first one, you, your body doesn't, you, you, you're kind of working on shock. The second one understands. And the third one is when it, when it kicks off. Go to the fourth if you want to make uh, you know, a little bit, uh, a bit tired. Okay, the fourfold would be tired, but do it every day. You should be holding your breath. No questions. Um, equally well, you should be doing your flexibility, which is we've covered many, many times. So it's bedtime stretches, some of the monofin stretches. Okay, should be doing them. I'm going to say every day, but if you miss the odd day, it doesn't matter. Okay, but if you if you got it in your mind, doing the bedtime stretches every day, then that's what you should be doing. Right. So that's it. It's pretty simple, really. Do stuff that mirrors what you're going to be doing free diving. Breath hold, flexibility, and cardio work. That's it. Okay. That, that's it. Now, the cardio work, uh, we're looking at using the core muscles because we're going to be monofinning. Um, um, again, on Friday, I will put up a video. Uh, Chaz from um, New World Athlete has oh, sorry real world athletes has uh, uh, got some videos for me i'm going to put them up on friday about specific exercises that you should be doing okay uh he, he said it to me he said i've got four exercises marcus that every human being should be doing all right all right Chaz. so we'll put that up on friday and i'll also give you uh um, some other ideas to do with with other other um aspects of, of free diving okay but be inventive okay do stuff uh that you know fits in so say core muscles you need to be driving the core muscles um, all, that, all 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 sports run from the core so hip uh, flexes and squats and, and and these sorts of mechanics will be driving from the hips and working the hips all right um upper body for free diving doesn't have to be massive Okay, you don't necessarily need to, uh, you know, have big guns or you know, big bicep curls or, okay, but you need the 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 movement in the shoulders, okay. So if you're if you're lifting weights, it's the sh the, the movement we want rather than the the power that you, you need, okay. Um, I'll give you some really nice exercises uh, to do with free immersion on Friday. Uh, which do does work the upper body, but it's more of a movement than a strength uh, exercise, and that's what you're really kind of looking for. Okay, um, that's pretty much all we want to go for. I was hoping um, if if I don't know I wasn't hoping if people want to ask a couple of questions, we've got a few people watching now. If you want to uh, pop a question, I can answer it. But pretty much. I just wanted people to kind of get those ideas. I wanted to get those ideas across because um, several people have asked me um, this, this. What should I be doing for fitness? Well, you know, um, things that match free diving. Obviously, there isn't many sports that do the, you know, the bre breaststroke leg kick, okay? But yoga will uh, have hip openers. You're going to be really working the ball joints in the... Uh, I'm pointing at my shoulders and saying hips, but I mean hips, okay, for the leg kick, okay, um, and the arm, upper body. Again, it's not going to be massive. You don't need massive upper body strength for no fins, but you need the movement, okay. Um, and realistically, um, swimming, you know, swimming. Your knowledge of water is imperative. If we get a swimmer come along to the club, you can tell. Um, uh, they've been a you know underwater hockey player, um, uh, water polo player, swimmer, anything. Their understanding of water is is exceptional, and you can be practicing that simply by going swimming. Next week in England, uh, the, the, I'm hoping the pools will open up, but even not even if they don't, you can go in open water swimming, and just the way that your hand 
goes through the water. As long as you're aware of it, as long as you're thinking about it, you can develop this awareness, this this understanding of water. That when your hand moves through the water, um, you don't want your fingers pushed together. You want them a little bit apart. Okay, it creates more resistance than 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 uh, fingers together. Your hand should be cupped slightly and fingers apart. That's the best position. Not flat and not squeezed together, but cupped and fingers slightly apart. And you can develop this understanding just by going swimming, as long as you do it mindfully, as long as you do it with an awareness, with a concept, uh, with a conception of what are you trying to do. All right. So uh, front crawl is using the same muscles as free immersion, pretty much. Okay, so there's a good crossover there. Um, and and say so that your awareness of how you move in the water, how you use the water, is going to pay dividends when you're free diving, like a hundredfold. Even if you're do, just doing competitions, which is the simplest, uh, most basic aspect of free diving is competition, because you take away any variables. Um, when you're going deep, and something goes wrong, and you need to correct your understanding from those swimming, uh, the angle of your hand, the angle of your feet, your fins, or your monofin, whichever, your understanding of that angle and how it changes your movement through the water will make the, uh, your, 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 your dive a lot more efficient. Okay? Even if you're doing you know, kind of, let's say, the, the simplest of, of all aspects of free diving, the most basic one, which is comp competition. Of course, if you're uh, out on a reef, um, then you're always going to be correcting and changing and moving and, and having to be aware of your movement. Uh, so, you know, the, these, these un this understanding is going to be, um, yeah, massive, massive improvement on your efficiency. So, pretty much that's it. I mean, in fact, no, not pretty much that's it. That's it. Um, on Friday, uh, I say I, I'm really, really am going to get up uh, some exercises um, I'll put it out at 7 o'clock whether it's uh, live or whether it's um, uh, a premiere I don't know but it will be specific exercises for you to do uh, during winter stroke lockdown for freediving um, in the meantime keep training bedtime stretches uh, breath hold and if you can get caving <laughs> okay, <even. laughs> um, all over body exercise keep it up and uh, thank you very much for joining us and I will speak to you uh, I'll see you, speak to you on Friday if not Q&A next uh, Monday should be another self massage um, video by Gabby which will, follows up from the first one um, which I don't know what number that video is but um you, you can you can look it up and uh, Gabby's done a second one self massage which would be awesome okay so we have got a question Ted's written uh, you said to, to use the training fins for efficient training at what point how often should you train with the fins you dive with ah that's that is actually a really good question so uh, training fins um, several different reasons why we use training fins okay so the first is you cannot fin wrongly but have I, uh, I thought I had had one around here somewhere. Uh, uh, I haven't uh, had a pair around here. So training fins are very, very soft. Okay, so you can't fin wrong with them. You can't bend your uh, your knee and push water because they're just too soft. Okay, so you can you have to fin correctly. The reason this is important is obviously not only to develop good technique, but half an hour into a training session when you're a little bit tired, it's so easy to break your technique to to do whatever you're trying to do whether it's a game or whatever okay so um, when you get tired with training fins you keep finning correctly because you can't fin incorrectly okay because they're just soft they're long they're not they're not like a little uh, short swim fins that you know the normal scuba fins I suppose length but very soft okay so you can't fin wrong okay? so that's that's why you should be training with them when you move over to the fins you're going to dive with, 
then you're not going to be doing a, uh, doing a dive, for, as I said earlier today, you're not going to be doing for a dive for an hour. You're going to be in the water for an hour, but the dive will be two minutes, or whatever you're going to do, and then you rest, and another two minutes, and then you rest. Okay? So um, if you add up you know, how much time you're actually underwater, you know, uh, even two minutes on, two minutes off, that's half hour, uh, you know, versus, you know, or, and most of that you won't be finning. Okay, most of that you won't be finning on, on a dive. Uh, you know, if you're going straight down, you'll stop, you'll rest. If you're spearfishing, you're going to stop. And, and so most of that two-minute dive, you're not actually finning. So let's say half of it. Okay, so that's 15 minutes now we're up to. You're finning 15 minutes in, in a in an in a open water session. So you can see instantly, as opposed to a pool session where you're finning solidly, pretty much solidly for a full hour, when you go in long fins, you're going to do it for, a, 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 just on my rough maths, a quarter at a time, 15 minutes. So when you, uh, obviously, let's, let's say now, you're not going in open water, so training fins, training fins, training fins, training fins. But when do you switch over to your long fins? Well, you want to do that progressively working towards the open water season. But bear in mind it's only 15 minutes that you are going to end up with the final goal is 15 minutes of finning. Okay? So if you're going away in uh, February, okay, use your training fins for the whole time and then your long fins just for the last length. Or just for just for the, the the warm up length or something, just to get your 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 mechanics, your body mechanics used to the long fins because they are different. Okay, uh, they feel different, they work different. But just do you know two lengths in, in your long fins. That's it. That's all you need in February, in January, second week of January. Do the warm up and the last length, and and so step it up. So. Over four sessions, you get to the point where you're using your long fins for 15 minutes in a session. Bearing in mind, you're still training for the other 45 minutes of that session. Yeah? So your long fins will be hard to use. They'll be knackered because you will be knackered. But because you've only got them on for two lengths, it's really easy to concentrate and keep that technique good. No, Don't cheat because it's only two lengths and then you take them off and go back to the training fins yeah so just just kind of bear that in mind when you've been training for i don't know a few years and you've been through the cycle of you know training in the winter not getting in open water and then moving into spring when you know you do a couple of dives in the summer when you spend the whole time in the water your body's used to it and you can switch between training fins and long fins instantly you know you can be training Training fins, training fins, training fins, and then, bang, you go on holiday, you put your long fins on, and your body remembers within, you know, a couple of dives what, what they're meant to be doing. Okay. So, you know, there, there's, there's, that's it. Monofins, however, you want to be building up the strength in the monofin. So, uh, you want to use the, the, the training fins to build up the technique, okay, and then you put the monofin on for one length, or two lengths, so you end up where your training fins are waiting for you. Two lengths, monofin. Really work it. The next week, one length, uh, double length, two lengths. So <laughs> build up. But then again, monofin, you're not going to be in the water for two hours doing, you know, 30 dives. Monofin, you're only going to be doing one or two dives. Okay. So you bear that in mind as you move from a training fins over to monofin. Okay. That you actually only want to do one or two dives. In the end, yeah, whether it's depth or whether it's a mermaid, oh, I haven't said but mermaiding, but your monofin is going to be a lot softer if you're mermaiding or photography. Yeah. Okay, so Ted's as uh, oh, Gabby's massage stream is on number 39, so uh, Gabby's number 39, and it'll be part two next week. So if you want to look it up this week and you can do her massage between now and next week, awesome. Number 39. Thanks, Alicia. Uh, gotcha. The places I've dived, long surface swim, so my shins got fatigued. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Oh, so, they, so there you go. So you, you kind of built your own idea of how you're going to do your answer. Yeah. If there's a long surface swim, that has to be built, has to be built into the way you, you, you conceive your, uh, your, your training. Yeah. 
Um, with that scenario, I would seriously suggest looking to get carbon fins um, because they're just so, so unfatiguing um, if, you've already, if you haven't already got any. Uh, because you, you, you don't want to get to a dive site knackered. And plastic fins are really good, and there's some really good plastic fins out there, but they just fatigue you quicker. Whereas carbon fins, because they're so soft, you know. So if, 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 if that's your scenario, if that's where you're diving and they're long swims and you can't get there any other way, then I'll suggest kind of moving over to a nice soft pair of carbon fins, if you haven't already. Okay, so thank you very much. Um, and I'll say, I'll see you, uh, I'll put something out on Friday and I'll speak to you next. I'll, I'll be doing this again next Monday.